Today on the season 4 premiere of Big C TV, we are going to test drive two betas that I played throughout the course of our break. Those of course are the Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta and the Evolve Open beta. I'm also going to talk about the Oscar nominations for 2015 in a new segment we like to call Movie Talk. All of that is next on the season 4 premiere of Big C TV. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to Big C TV Season 4, Episode 1. Uh, my name is Chris, aka Big C, and of course this is our season premiere. Um, I know when we finished up Season 3 I talked about wanting to come back in January. Um, I decided to take a little bit longer break just because not a whole lot was going on and I had a lot of stuff going on for me. So I wanted to make sure that I had adequate time before... Um, we came back from break. So now that we are back, I actually have a lot of stuff to go over. So much, in fact, that I'm going to split the season premiere into two episodes. Not like we've done this before or anything. So, this is episode one. I've also got episode two, which will also come out later today. Um, and is being filmed as soon as this one's done. So, um, first of all, some expectations for season four. Um, my goal, personally... Uh, is I want to be able to do more... Uh, first of all, I want to be more timely. Um, last season, some was my fault, some wasn't. Um, it was all over the place. We took you know several month breaks, uh, had lots of difficulties, lots of technical problems, lots of delays. Um, so 2015, our goal is for that not to happen. So at the moment, assuming everything goes according to plan, Season 4 is going to run from now, which is February of 2015, until July. After that is when Season 5 is going to debut in the fall. So, two different seasons the same year. Um, but we got a lot of stuff that's going to be going on. I'm hoping either in Season 4 or 5 to do another trip, similar to uh, Cajun style. I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was my favorite moment of 2014. Uh, for those who watched the best of 2014 video. So I hope to do something like that again, but uh, in 2015. Anyway, without further ado, let's kick off the show with a test drive of the Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta. Now this took place over the uh, beginning of the year, so the end of December and the beginning of January. Of course, we were on break, so we did not release an episode covering it. But we're going to cover it now. So here is a test drive of the Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta for Xbox One. Control power weapons to dominate the enemy team.
Reloader is 30 seconds. You're full. Spawn right by it. I need to break it fire. Red face. Ten seconds to sniper rifle. Power weapons in ten seconds. Down in mid. Sniper rifle's ready. Power weapons are up. We've got the sniper rifle.
Did all right. All right, so now we're gonna jump to another beta. This is the Evolve Open Multiplayer Beta. Um, now Evolve comes out in like a week, so expect to see more footage from Evolve. I already showed uh, the big alpha, so this is beta footage, a few improvements here and there. Um, what I'm gonna show you actually is the tutorial, essentially. This shows you how to play the game. It's gonna give you a taste of what's to come, as well as a uh, opening cinematic to the game so you can get a little taste of it and then of course when the game fully launches um i'll probably play it some more i don't know if i'll show it on big ctv just because we've already seen it twice but uh i might you never know we'll see what happens so anyway here is the opening cinematic for evolve So next I'm going to give you gameplay footage. This is basically of the tutorial that shows you how to play Evolve. Um, I'm only going to show one of the two tutorials and that of course is uh, for Goliath which is the monster um, in Evolve. So here's the tutorial on how to play as Goliath from the Evolve open beta. Goliath is a physical brute with powerful melee abilities. Use the smell ability to highlight nearby hunters and wildlife. Melee attacks are very effective at close range. Eat to gain armor and evolve. Goliath can climb almost any surface. Leap to travel faster. Goliath will leap towards the crosshair's location. The leap ability recharges over time. While jumping towards a ledge, hold the climb button to catch it and climb up. A well-placed rock throw delivers a crushing blow from a distance. The leap smash is effective against one target or many. 
fire breath is ideal for damaging multiple targets at once. Charge attack can close the distance in combat or aid escape. Okay, I guess this is kind of a tutorial thing. That's not what I meant. Uh... Come here, you little lizard things. Eat you.
to leap smash creatures.
bad. Got the monster bronze. Okay, I'll take it. All right, we're gonna end episode one with a new segment we like to call Movie Talk. Now, we've done talk segments before. I have sports talk, I've done gaming talk. I don't know why I haven't done a Movie Talk one. Um, but especially because 2015 has so many big, high-profile releases coming out, um, and of course, I'm a movie connoisseur. I love watching movies, I love talking about movies, I hope to make movies someday. Um, I figured it makes sense for me to do a whole segment on movies. So of course, a few weeks ago they had the Academy Award nominations for the 2015 um, Oscars. And I'm going to talk about those. So here is Oscars discussion in the first ever edition of Movie Talk. Okay, so the 2015 Oscars. Um, very excited about this year's ceremony, mostly because they picked another host that I like. Um, last year, of course, it was Seth MacFarlane. This year, it's Neil Patrick Harris. Very excited. I think he's going to do a terrific job. Um, so that excites me right off the bat. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through the nominations um, and give you my picks. Now, I will fully admit, I have not seen all of these movies. <laughs> So, I may not know what I'm talking about. Um, I will just give you my picks based on what I've heard or what I've seen. That kind of thing. And if I've seen the movie, then I'll comment. Um, and of course, if you notice I'm looking down, that's because I am, because I don't have everything memorized. I'm using my handy iPhone um, to cover everything. So, let's start off with the Best Picture nominee. So, the nominees are Whiplash, American Sniper, Birdman, the Grand Budapest Motel, or Hotel, sorry. Um, the Intimidation Game, Selma, The Theory of Everything, and Boyhood. So, of those, um, I've only seen Birdman. Um, I would like to see American Sniper. I would also like to see Selma and Boyhood. Um, the rest, I'm not that sold on, honestly. Um, even if they're good, I mean, just because the movie's good doesn't mean I'm interested in it. Um, so it's going to be interesting for those. Birdman, I think, is a very good film. However, I'm not sure it's best picture worthy. Um, just because it's a very strange film. I think it will win a lot of awards this year, but I don't expect it to win best picture. Um, just based on what I heard, I'm going to go with Boyhood or American Sniper for best picture. I think both of those have a good chance. Um, Boyhood, I mean, took 12 years to make and follow the same actor throughout growing up. That's just a feat by itself. Then American Sniper being one of the highest grossing movies, like war movies ever. Um, I mean, that helps, but it's an interesting concept and uh, I've heard it's very good. I've heard Bradley Cooper is absolutely terrific in it. So I think those two are probably my gut feelings. If I have to pick one of those two, I would probably go with Boyhood as my pick for Best Picture. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully I'll rent it, then I can actually uh, see what it's about. Alright, so next we're going to go with Best Actress. The nominees are Felicity Jones for The Theory of Everything, Marion Cotillard for Two Days, One Night, Reese Witherspoon for Wild, Jolene Moore for Still Alice, and Roseman Pike for Gone Girl. Um... I've not seen any of these movies. I want to see Gone Girl. I've heard Roseman Pike does a terrific job. My gut feeling is Julianne Moore is going to finally win. She's a terrific actress. She's done all these great roles. Hasn't won an Oscar yet. Um, and I've heard this year is finally going to be the year that she's going to win. So my gut feeling, even though, again, I haven't seen any of these movies, but I have a feeling it's going to be uh, Julianne Moore for Still Alice, who is going to win Best Actress. For Best Actor, we have Michael Keaton for Birdman, Eddie Redmayne for The Theory of Everything, Benedict Cumberbatch for The Intimidation Game, Bradley Cooper for American Sniper, and Steve Carell for Foxcatcher. I think this one's almost a lock. It's going to be Michael Keaton. And the main reason why is because he's kind of the glue that holds the weird, strange story of Birdman together. 
His performance is absolutely terrific. He plays a washed up actor who used to play a superhero, um, but instead wants to relaunch his career by being a uh, an actor on stage to launch a Broadway show. And uh, the show, it's the movie itself is very strange, but his performance is part of what makes it so good. Um, so I would definitely say, personally, I think Michael Keaton's going to walk away with this one for Birdman. Um, I do want to see American Sniper, and I actually do want to see Foxcatcher. I've heard it's a very interesting film, and uh, apparently Steve Carell is terrific in it. So we'll see, but uh, that's my pick. So uh, I'm going to go with Michael Keaton for Birdman for Best Actor. Best Director. The nominations are, and I'm probably going to butcher some of these names, um, Morton Teldum for The Intimidation Game, Bennett Miller, who's the director of Moneyball, who I really liked. I liked that movie. Um, he directed Foxcatcher. Alejandro Gonzalez Nitiru for Birdman. Richard Linkletter for Boyhood and Wes Anderson for The Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, that one's tough just because I picked Boyhood for Best Picture. Again, I haven't seen Boyhood, so I can't comment on it. I would lean toward personally giving it to Alejandro for Birdman just because the direction of that film is terrific. Um, but again, I haven't seen any of the others, so I can't really comment. Um, my gut tells me it's going to go to Richard Linklater for Boyhood. If Boyhood's going to win Best Picture, I think that's he's going to win Best Director. That's my, that's my guess. Um, best Foreign Language Film, I don't care. Best Supporting Actor... We have Mark Ruffalo for Foxcatcher, Edward Norton for Birdman, J.K. Simmons for Riplash, Whiplash, uh, Robert Duvall for The Judge, and Ethan Hawke for Boyhood. I think uh, this one, everyone keeps talking about J.K. Simmons for Whiplash. Um, I've heard it's an absolutely terrific role, and he's a guy who's been around, he's been doing all kinds of stuff. I mean, he was in Juno, he was in Spider-Man. Um, so he's a terrific actor who's done so many great roles, and I've heard this is like the film that really showcases his talent. So uh, I'm going to go with uh, J.K. Simmons for Whiplash uh, for Best Supporting Actor. Best Supporting Actress, we have Emma Stone for Birdman, Patricia Arquette for Boyhood, Mel Streep for Into the Woods, Laura Dern for Wild, and Keira Knightley for The Intimidation Game. Um, that one's tougher. My gut is telling me Patricia Arquette for Boyhood just because, again, I'm picking it for Best Picture um, and Best Director, so I have a hunch that's what's going to happen. Again, I haven't seen it. Um, personally, I would go with Emma Stone for Birdman because I thought her performance was terrific and it's something a little bit different for her in terms of um, roles because it's more of a so serious, dramatic role as opposed to kind of indie comedy type stuff. So... Um, I would go with personally with Emma Stone, but my gut is it's going to be Patricia Arquette for Bird or for uh, Boyhood. That's my guess. Let's see. Best animated feature. This is a hot button topic of mine, and I will get to why in a second. Dominations are The Tale of Princess Cayuga, How to Train Your Dragon 2, The Box Trolls, Big Hero 6, and Song of the Sea. Here's why it's a hot button topic and here's why a lot of people are upset. The Lego movie was snubbed. That is the movie that deserves to win. That movie was terrific. And granted, this has been a fantastic year for animated films. With Big Hero 6 and Dragon, both of them are great. I liked Lego movie better than both. I thought the style was great. It was funny. There was so much to it. And then the whole meta story thing at the end I thought just made it put it over the top as being absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm glad that uh, the directors had a good humor about getting snubbed, but personally I'm outraged and I feel the Lego movie should win. So that is definitely my pick for best animated is the Lego movie. Of the ones here, I would root for Big Hero 6, um, but I have a feeling it's going to be How to Train Your Dragon because that's won pretty much everything else. So. My pick is Big Hero 6, but it's probably going to be How to Train Your Dragon. Best original song. I really don't know any of them. Um, 
Glory, which is the movie that's featured in Selma, is probably going to win. I'm amused that Everything is Awesome is nominated. It will win, but I'm amused that it's nominated. Um, cinematography. We have Rizard... Li I can't even pronounce that name for Ida. Dick Pope for Mr. Turner. Robert Yeoman for The Grand Budapest Hotel. Lucas Zai for Ida. Emmanuel Lebeski for Birdman. And Roger Deakins for Unbroken. Definitely for that one, it's going to go to Birdman, just because the film was shot as if it was one continuous take. I mean, I'm not an expert cinematographer, but I can't see that as being easy to do, especially because it really did look like they didn't take a, a chop or anything in editing. So the editing is also terrific for Birdman, but uh, definitely for cinematography, I think that's Birdman's to lose. A best writing adapted screenplay, we have Whiplash, American Sniper. Intimidation Game, The Theory of Everything, and Inherit Vice. Um, my hunch is American Sniper on that one. Um, it's a real-life story about an American hero. Um, I think that's going to tug at a lot of heartstrings, as well as the both positive and negative press that the, uh, the Hollywood leftists have been giving that movie. Um, I'm hoping that will help boost its chances. Maybe Hollywood will say, you know, we're not entirely anti-war or anything like that. Um, so I would probably guess American Sniper has a good chance with that one. Uh, let's go with the original score. We have the Grand Budapest Hotel, Intimidation Game, Interstellar, Mr. Turner, and The Theory of Everything. Again, the only movie of those that I've seen is Interstellar. The music was terrific. It's Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer gets snubbed so many times. He should have won for The Dark Knight in 2008. Um, so without hearing any of them, I'm going to go with uh, Interstellar with Hans Zimmer. Uh, visual effects. We have Interstellar, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, X-Men Days of Future Past, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Interstellar is going to win that. Um... As good as the other movies are, the visual effects in Interstellar were absolutely phenomenal. Um, so, Interstellar is going to win Best Visual Effects. That's my guess. The Dark Horse, I think, would be Guardians, but I think Interstellar's got it in the bag. Uh, Grand Budapest Motel, Foxcatcher, Foxcatcher, Guardians, Guardians, Grand Budapest Motel, or Hotel. So pretty much it's just Guardians, Foxcatcher, and Grand Budapest Hotel. Guardians is going to win that. So, yay for Guardians winning an Oscar. Best Costume Design. We have Grand Budapest Motel, Into the Woods, Hotel. I keep saying Motel. Uh, Inherit Vice, Mr. Turner, and Maleficent. Um, I feel Maleficent will win that one just because that had a lot of nice, kind of cool-looking period piece costumes, and those type of movies tend to win Best Costume Design. Usually if there's a movie involving Jane Austen or anything like that, that will always win Best Costume Design, so that's my pick for costume design. Um, sound mixing. We have Interstellar, Birdman, American Sniper, Unbroken, Whiplash, and that's it. It's multiple people for the same movies. Um, Interstellar is going to win mixing. I have a feeling pretty much any technical award that Interstellar is nominated for, it's going to win. That's my guess. Documentary, don't care. Live action short film, don't care. Editing, we have Whiplash, The Intimidation Game, American Sniper, Boyhood, Grand Budapest Hotel, and American Sniper again. Um, honestly, I think Birdman should have been nominated for that. Um, of those, I'm going to guess Boyhood, probably. Maybe not. I don't know much about the other films, so I can't really comment, but I'm going to guess with Boyhood. That's it. All right, so those are my picks for the 2015 I, uh, Academy Awards. Not Icon. Um, bleh. So those are my picks for the 2015 Academy Awards. They air on February 22nd on ABC. Neil Patrick Harris is hosting. Um, I'm sure I'll talk about the winners um, in a future episode of Movie Talk. I've got a few other things I want to talk about in Movie Talk, too, including... Uh, my thoughts on the Fantastic Four and Ghostbusters reboots, among other things. So, um, 
Yeah, that's going to do it for Movie Talk, and that's going to do it for this episode of Big C TV. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, look for episode two right behind this one. So, uh, we'll see you later.